All right, welcome, folks. Mill Spec Ops Monkey here. This is going to be your sit rep for Monday, uh, end of March, man. 28th, 2022. This year is flying by, and uh, boy, what a year it has been. So, uh, without further ado, let's hop on over to the board. Make sure you hit that like, subscribe, and bell for notification. We got a lot of ground to cover today. There's some interesting data points going on out there uh, that we need to look at. Uh, <laughs> eh, boy, it's just, it's nuts. This world is, seems to just be going very rapidly into a very bad direction and so we can't say we're not surprised by it but uh, man when you're in the middle of it it is definitely uh, hair on fire so uh, just one quick point out I wanted to show you we got somebody took off out of the Middle East here well actually sorry back that up out of Israel so that's probably going to be sec def uh, on his flight um, looking to be headed across uh, if I had to guess he's on that uh, tra uh, trajectory he may pop into Ter Sierra and get some get some gas but uh but it looks like they are rolling out of the middle east there they were in israel and uh and headed outbound so uh we'll just put that in as a data point now what i did want to show you real fast we got a couple e6s up right now and then a couple r135s actually four r135s now some of those are going to be um over here in europe but let's just uh again grab that one because it's always good to add to our quiver and let's see biff let's see i think the shiner is definitely going to be u.s based yeah there we go all right now let me just tighten my screen up so we can actually look at it and then we'll start kind of getting into the data um now we're going to start it off here in skyglass and so you can see uh let's see come on that's supposed to disappear on me there we go all right uh, you can see this is actually what we've got going on right now i'll show you what it looked like here just a couple minutes ago but these are three e6s these are airborne command centers if you're not familiar with those they're called takamo uh, is the uh, the nickname for them uh, but they are basically talking to our icbms right so if we were to have a uh, you know pop off on some nuclear war uh, scenarios where we weren't able to launch from the ground these guys are basically airborne command centers for our nukes all right and so it looks like we've got three of those up here in the u.s uh, six is the highest I've ever seen it. Three is pretty active. Um, and then these are basically R-135s. These are going to be your sniffer birds or your recon birds, right? These guys are doing heavy-duty surveillance, looking at uh, battlefields and all kinds of stuff. But that, that aircraft right there, as I've mentioned before, can track an object the size of a soccer ball from 300 miles away. So uh, just let that sink in from a data point perspective. That's pretty impressive. Uh, now, you'll notice, too, that these um, this E6 kind of took the shape of Florida, right? Just kind of came down here and went in that general area. Uh, I find that interesting just because we know who's down here in this area, right? That's going to be Trump. And so uh, it's... it's um, well, let's just see what happens, right? It's just interesting. But we do have one down here I just wanted to point out, too, that's headed down over Columbia. Uh, you'll see them run some kind of route here. I think that's because we've got um, a, f a fair amount of presence uh, from the Soviets and the Chinese down here in South America now. And so we're starting to see that more often. They also kind of do a sweep along this general area. Uh, and so we'll watch that. But uh, that's kind of going to be your, your U.S. spycraft up currently at the moment now let's get away from that let's get over here to the uh europe and uh, we'll just see what's going on in the eu relative to spycraft now you're going to see we are heavy duty uh running recon now those are r-135s going to be some of your gulf stream uh the swedish one but those are mainly r-135s and b-703s uh those are actually your looking glasses right and so um the fact that they are up looking uh, right along that border uh tells you they're getting fresh set of data you can see them hitting different flight levels as they kind of get through it uh, but that's going to be our spy craft uh, effort going on over there now the ones you see above at the very high not really marked with any trails uh that say gaf uh right there those are actually balloons right those are intelligent balloon intelligence balloons over germany so they have a very broad reach those right there probably are looking at the entirety of europe if i had to guess and there's more than just that but uh, i know it's got some f-16s up too over at belgium look like they're doing a little bit of hot flying um but yeah mostly uh and then of course the swedish golf four is uh one that we see on a regular basis now uh that is going to be we actually bounced over here i meant to do 
uh, give you kind of a look. But this is going to be your air refuelers right now over the United States, just to give you an idea in terms of of um, what we're seeing. Uh, that's going to be a pretty good indicator of fighters. Now, these down here at the very bottom, you can see where the tight green uh, in the South Carolina area, those look to be touch and goes, but the other ones are doing some air refueling. They're actually headed out to their other sites. Now, uh, let's get over here to the, to the EU. We look at the heavies from the uh, EU standpoint, and it doesn't want to show me, so we'll just skip back. All right, well, I evidently did not load that properly, so let's just forget about it. Come back to it here in just a second. But, uh, yeah, this is actually going to be uh, what we're just looking at, these E6s and the 135s. Now, that C135 right there you see on your screen is actually a sniffer. And so that is um, one that's actually looking for nukes uh, again. Uh, and I noticed that E6 kind of kicked out over the water, which I thought was interesting uh, as it was doing some routes over Florida. The P8s are doing touch and goes. They look to be just running uh, around an airport. So not too concerned about those this morning. All right. All right, let's get back over to this uh, as we're looking through. I was trying to peel the onion on my heavies and uh, air refuelers, and I dropped the ball on that. So let's get back in. We'll just get a fresh look at our C-130s as we paint our map here. Uh, take away our E-6s. And um, all right, now that's going to give us kind of that fresh, fresh look here at what we've got up in terms of... Um, Heavy movers actually across the U.S. Now, the one thing I will point out that I found very interesting, notice the activity here on the eastern seaboard. Again, uh, there seems to be kind of the heavy focus off on the east coast right now relative to the movement. But the one thing I want to point out is notice these are all, for the most part, C-130s, right? These C-130s are kind of short hop, not these big, long C-17s, but, uh, uh, but these C-130s. Um, I don't know. I, that to me is reallocating some assets within the United States, if I had to guess. All right, I'm just just spitballing here, but um, I've, we've been seeing that trend now for a couple of weeks. All right, and so uh, that would kind of give us an indication that, um, you know, that is the case that they are kind of repositioning some folks here in the United States. Okay, uh, because they're going to the short haul birds instead of the long haul birds. Okay, all right, let's back that up. Let's uh, do this. I was looking at a B-52 and an air refueler. Uh, let's see if it's still up here. It looks like it has disappeared. So let's get out of that. Not waste a lot of time on it. Um, all right. Now, here's one of the other things I just want to show you. This is going to be a uh, flashbang schedule for today. I'm telling you, this guy is like a blind fart in a windstorm. I, I, there's just no rhyme or reason to anything he does. Um, his hip shots, his gaffes, the things that he says, just, just simply amazing. Um, but I just want to point out, uh, that all of a sudden we seem to be focused very much so on uh, security at home and around the world. Uh, you notice we're spending money galore putting up uh, uh, border security in places like Oman and Jordan and everywhere else, which makes zero sense to me why we're doing that and we're not even protecting our own southern border. And I'm going to show you some details and some data around our southern border that's kind of going to raise some eyebrows because I think there's something going on there um that is definitely not good okay so yeah he's talking budget today and then uh i don't know i can't even get into it uh they're, they're, this i think is very comical which uh the, and this folks right here is complete rubbish uh if you've ever seen uh reduce the deficit by a trillion over the next decade well let's focus really on the uh, i don't know seven eight trillion dollars you've spent in the last two years uh, so you're just going to, you know, bleed that out by a trillion dollars, which in the grand scheme of things is nothing, given the fact that we'll probably be over on a digital dollar here pretty soon anyway. And so this is all irrelevant. So it's just, uh, again, it's just a, a blind data point that he throws out there that, you know, the idiots of the world actually read it and think, oh, boy, that's good. OK. OK. Now let's talk a little bit about this. Let's uh, from a flashbang perspective. He hits the lowest job approval rating of his presidency. It's at 40%, and it is still plummeting downward, all right? That, folks, should scare all of us, not because we know that uh, it's probably really worse than that. Uh, it's probably in the, in, if I had to guess, in the 20 range. Uh, this is probably propped up by the media. Uh, but the, the reason this ought to scare us is because there's a lot of things going on that he's going to try and take eyes off of, uh, including a war. All right. Anytime you got a president who is uh, 
ratings are in the toilet or uh, they've got some bad press or they're just basically botching up everything, they want to take eyes off of them. And that actually is a big in- increased threat to us from a national security perspective because these guys start doing stupid stuff. And so, uh, and that would include bringing us into a war. All right. Now, this is going to be one of the main reasons I think uh, you're going to see. I just want to point this data point out because it is a big one. And uh, you're not going to see this anywhere on mainstream media. Uh, but this is basically, they're saying that the, uh, the laptop contains multiple Department of Defense encryption keys with 20 plus year expiration dates. All right, let that sink in. That allows a holder, whoever's got that, access to DOD databases. 20 years, uh, uh, the, the expiration dates. That right there, folks, is criminal, okay? Um, and that is why we are where we are. Yeah, there we go, white versus black. Spy versus spy. All right, let's get over here real fast before we get into some of the other details. But that one right there ought to make all of us stand up and pay attention because um, if that is indeed the case, uh, you can see why all focus is, is headed over to a war and everything else. Now, the other thing, too, just a quick point out, we've got um, seven volcanoes that are popping right now in terms of ash. Just pay close attention to that. This has actually dropped down a little bit. These are actually popping up. This system, just it just pops and fires on any given day around that ring of fire, and uh, it is... Uh, it's kind of neat to watch. But uh, anyway, these are ash alerts for volcanoes, just something we pay attention to, okay? Now, um, the reason I was talking about this, you may have heard the GAF, uh, you know, flashbang talking about uh, telling our troops that they're getting ready to meet some of the Ukrainian soldiers in Ukraine. Uh, that would indicate that we are getting ready to go into peace operation mode. You can see all the other countries, if you looked at the, the heavies uh, traffic that we just showed, um, in the uh, in Europe, it has been very, very heavy over the past weekend, very broad uh, and spread out. And so it is um, uh, just a data point, but it looks like they are doing everything they can to get us into this war, uh, take our eyes off of the current situation. Of course, it is a new world order as they are pushing. Uh, but this is just a, again, data points. Uh, I don't see anything indicating that we're backing out of this, all right? It looks to be like we are full steam ahead. And we'll get back over here and look at those, um, the European heavies here in just one second, okay? Because I know I forgot to do that. So that said, let's take a quick gander here. This is just a Title 42, for those not familiar with that. Uh, that basically allows our Border Patrol to stop people from coming into the country due to uh, COVID-19 concerns. If they have any um, exposure or whatever it may be, that's the only mechanism they really have from stopping people to get into our country, <laughs> which is crazy when you think about it. But that rule is up for review here in two days. And uh, if it does not get uh, pushed forward and extended and it gets repealed, then they're saying that we've got uh, about a million migrants camped out across the southern border that are going to be pushing in within weeks. Uh, timing is everything. All right. We haven't heard much about our border as of lately, but don't lose sight of that. Okay. All right. Now, here's another thing, too. I just want to point out <laughs> the French, of all people, are actually uh, in, they're increasing their uh, missile submarine patrols. Uh, these are nukes, right? These submarines carry 16 nuclear warheads uh, with a range of about 6,000 miles uh, on the warheads. So uh, these guys, they've got three of them in the water uh, and they've stepped up their game. And uh, you know it's getting real when the French start doing this, okay, because uh, these guys are notorious for really being just kind of white flag and everything, right? So, uh, but anyway, I just found that uh, interesting, almost comical, but um, yeah, they're in the water too now. So we've got uh, all hands on deck. We've also seen an, in, an increase uh, in the aircraft when I was looking at the heavies um, going into Europe of the French, uh, moving a lot of stuff around on, the, on some uh, A400 aircraft, okay? All right, now these are the ones, so this is why we're just looking at Blinken coming out of Israel. Uh, he thinks that the allies all see eye to eye on the nuclear issue. As I mentioned in my monkey minute over the weekend, we are giving them, uh, everything they want. Plus some matter of fact, we're enabling them. Um, it is absolutely insane <laughs> what we're doing. Uh, we're, we're even giving them money to, to fund this stuff, which is, you know, we saw that back in the Kenyans administration, uh, where we flew plane loads of money over to, uh, enable their nuclear program. So 
get your head around that, nuclear Iran, right? Uh, you give the guy who's the bully on the block who runs his mouth and talks about eliminating Israel and the West, and you're giving him the tools to do it. You, the, that you just can't make this stuff up, all right? Now, here's another one. Uh, they're actually being removed. Uh, this is the Iran's Revolutionary Guard are, are being removed from the U.S. terror list. Yeah. All right. That just, uh, again, can't make this stuff up. All right. Now, Manufacture World Crisis. This is a Zero Hedge article, and this is why I was talking about the stuff. When we see the Biden lap, uh, uh, the laptop from, from um, Hunter, and we see all of the other... Um, things going on, right? Remember that, uh, you know, Uranium One is a very big deal. It never fails. I can't do a show without a dog barking. So uh, when we talk about this Uranium One, and uh, I guess she's agreeing with me on this, uh, remember, they are knee deep into this. This is the scandal of the century outside of spying on our president. Uh, but this is a major, major deal. And you've got hands in everybody's pockets. And this is a this is basically pay to play or a, a quick get rich scheme. But when you start looking at that, uh, you can see why uh, there is so much money tied into the U Ukraine and into that economy um, that uh, we are basically there. These guys are fighting for their survival of everything they've done over the last probably 20 years of standing up infrastructure within that country. And so that is what we think. <laughs> is why I don't see us backing out of this. This is going to go, you know, that's why he's talking about having, you know, let's get Putin removed from office because of, uh, you know, just unfit. You know, if there's anybody unfit for office, it's this guy. So anyway, I just find it comical. But even Zero Hedge is talking about this manufacturer world crisis that we just seem to be continually pushing in. We're about to put troops into it. We, uh, we met with them in an emergency meeting uh to basically shore those things up right everybody's now getting ready to jockey we see the flights that would support that and so um it looks like we're headed full steam ahead to a world war so all right let's get over to the cyber attacks this is kind of our watch area uh the entire globe at this moment but uh you can see top attack origins uh 3.79 million coming out of the united states and then of course 2.3 billion of those coming back at the united states so we seem to be getting popped left, right, and center here. Now this, uh, I will put these links to all of this cyber sites uh, and the stuff that we're looking at around the world in the uh, description. So if you, uh, you want to look at that after the show, just click on one of those and this will take you to the site. Pretty fascinating site, but you can kind of see where all of the, uh, the activity is going. This looks to be kind of a normal day, really. Um, yeah, last time we looked at it. Now this is uh, Checkpoint. This is another one you can see US uh, hitting Guatemala today. That's pretty interesting. Um, uh, yeah, but this is really Italy hitting on Canada. Pretty, pretty wild to see these attacks take place and just watch them, uh, as they ping in. It's kind of a cool thing, but, uh, this is going to only increase. This is just another mechanism of the war. And as things start to continue to spool up, uh, and we get into a war, once the war goes hot, I think it's all bets off. They're going to start doing, they got nothing to lose at that point, right? They'll just start popping off with cyber attacks all over the place. So now this one here I thought was interesting. One of um, Space Monkeys sent me this. Uh, this is actually Leo Labs. Again, link is down in the description. But if you want to look at the space junk and debris that are floating around this planet, including satellites, it is incredible the amount of garbage we have around our planet. Just look at this. It's absolutely incredible. How they map it all, I, I don't know. The only thing I can think of is they've got a satellite that's further out, and it's a base, basically grabbing all of it. So I have no idea what these red boxes are. <laughs> no idea. I'll have to reach out to them and ask. There's also some beams that are firing up here, uh, and I'm not really sure what those are either. Again, I just got this, but I wanted to share it because it was just an interesting data point. Uh, you know, we wonder why we see all this stuff falling from the sky on a regular basis, but just look at the junk you can see these are some of these are satellites some of them not some of them are just debris little red dots are just junk floating around there so uh it's just amazing uh anyway i'm fascinated by that that could be a screensaver right on your desktop it's just incredible all right let's go over to black sea just take a quick look you can see the flow of goods is still moving pretty pretty regularly through that little straight uh to the uh just off to the left of turkey um, and that is cargo and supplies just pumping in like nobody's business. They haven't missed a beat. 
So uh, are we really putting a hurting on them in terms of sanctions? It doesn't appear to, that way. Looks like uh, they've got flow of goods into Russia over here. Crimea here, no problem. All right. Okay, this is Biggs Army Airfield. I just want to show you nothing on the board. Very odd. We typically see something out here, and there's nothing for a Monday. Very interesting. We look over the weekend, and there was nothing. Would that indicate that all assets are in place? Possibly. Um, we won't know until uh, this thing kicks off to see if we continue to feed the machine. But uh, it looks like we've got everybody in where they need to be for the most part. Now, these are the Omni flights. Uh, again, you can see where these are coming out of Okinawa. This one's coming out of Washington, headed to Ireland. Uh, but these are troops, folks. Uh, cherry point to March. So is that a replan? Is this a repositioning before it crosses the, the drink? I don't know. But uh, but these these are really uh, these are troops, right? And so you can see flights coming back and forth. We're still kind of pumping into Asia, uh, which I think that's going to be the next zone to go hot as this thing goes into a world war, right? So, all right, it's going to be the Camber flights, U.S. These are 100% troop movers. Uh, you can just see where they're coming out of Ramstein. Uh, this one's coming out of uh, Cologne, and this is Dover Air Force Base. Uh, but yeah, still pumping into the region. This is Turkey uh, right here. These guys look to be headed into the Middle East, probably um, uh, just adding to what we already have over there. But like I said, uh, the stuff coming out of Biggs Army Airfield is actually down today, which is very unusual. I didn't expect to see that. So, all right, this is going to be uh, the UK, also down. Uh, typically, we see about eight flights from these guys, maybe a little bit more. Uh, this one's coming out of the United States, and this one looks to be coming out of the Middle East. Again, troop movers. And um, this is actually the Russians' version. This is going to be uh, the Ruskies State Aero aircraft. Uh, this one looks to be headed, uh, don't know where it's headed to. Again, destination unknown. There's no telling whether or not those are diplomats or they could be troop movers. Uh, not 100% because I don't know what that fleet does exactly other than it is equivalent to a lot of our blue and white flights, right? So our dignitaries and stuff. So anyway, just want to point that out. There is one flight on the board from there. Now we get over here and we look at Putin's flight. That thing hasn't flown in two weeks, so he appears to be still in Moscow. And uh, we'll see if he stays there. But we'll keep our eye on that one. You know, that mean he's there. Could be flying something else, but that is his Air Force One variant. And uh, it is still in Moscow, okay? All right, now this is where it gets a little interesting and I'd like to just point some of this out. You remember Friday we looked at this board and there was probably 20 plus flights all over, just going like mad, okay? Now, this is Swift flights. These are the Swift Air and they are pretty much our immigration feeder, okay? These are the guys that are moving stuff around. They do U.S. Marshal contracts, they do uh, Bureau of Prison contracts. They do do a lot of stuff, uh, Border Patrol, things like that, moving people in and out of the country, around the country. The thing that just kind of gets me is the fact that we are, this thing has been nonstop, okay? And then when we look at the data, if it is feeding the prison systems, right, bringing people that are criminals out of the country, down south, um, if possible, possible, but there's one element to this when I started looking at rumors that Biden was about to reinstate the, uh, the military draft, okay? And I don't have anything to confirm that. I just had heard that as a rumor, and as I was doing my research, because I always do that, I don't want to put something out in front of you that has not been vetted if I can help it, right? Um, and so uh, it's always, you know, trying to shine light on the darkness, right? And, and this is... One of those things, I've heard it from several different data points, even down to the MOS that they're going to be uh, grabbing people up from prior service, okay? And um, anyway, the draft came up. And I, what I want to show you here as we look at this stuff is that this is off the selective service system. And um, basically it says in the event of a draft, and this is in the event of actually a national emergency, okay? What does it take to declare a national emergency? Well, we, we kind of see the... Uh, everything being put into play to do that, right? Um, and to what degree and level? I mean, we already have a national emergency in play. That's how they're doing the spending. That's how they were doing the border walls, right? 
But if somebody pulls the trigger on this, it says, in the event of a draft, almost all men aged 18 to 25 who are U.S. citizens or, and this is where these flights come into play, immigrants living in the U.S. will be required to register. But if it's a draft, they, <laughs> they are gone. Now, the question then goes into play, what do we have coming into this country? And uh, would that support uh, maybe having uh, quite a bit of uh, a pool, so to speak, here in the United States that could be uh, put into play, right? If you've got all your troops out of the United States um, and you have no really a lot of troops left in the United States other than your National Guard, uh, are they backfilling? Is that the intention here? Are they going to, are they bringing in military age males? Remember the bus we saw down in Maitland, Florida in the last five months that had all military age males, uh, you know, stand outside a bus, look just like somebody going, you know, processing into MEPS. Um, and somebody tried to say that was, you know, uh, that was fake. And that was basically guys coming in to work the, work the farms. Uh, no females, which I thought was really interesting. And uh, they were all young males, okay, um, handpicked. Absolutely crazy. But let's get over here and look at statistics and see if any of this stuff kind of jives, right? The data always tells us. That's why we look at the flights, um, because the data doesn't lie, right? And so we get into this. Now, remember, we've been watching flights, in some cases, 20-plus a day around the United States down into uh, South America, Central America. This right here are the amount of non-citizens uh, criminal encounters, right? These are the amount of arrests. There's only 30, oh, sorry, 3,876 arrests. Um, you know, that you're talking probably 10 planes. You know, maybe, maybe 15 aircraft could handle all of that. So the amount of flights we see on a daily basis don't really add up with these numbers if that is the case, if these guys are true criminals and you know we're moving them into the prison system right that gets me over to this now if you go look at the data take a look at this this is uh single adults look at the number of single adults year over year but look at this one this was uh flashbang's first year right 1.3 million single adults came into the country right Look at this one here. We're already at half a million, and we're only three months in. So we're about to put that number to shame if we keep going on the trajectory we are. But single adult encounters, all right? This is, you know, they, they, the media will have you believe that uh, this is all about unaccompanied minors. It's all about the children, you know, immigration system and why we need to do what we do. But the reality is this is a very small number compared to this. This is all single adults. So then you go back over to this. And you look at all of the flights stacked up on this board, and yeah, does it, is it, I don't know, maybe it's just me, put on my tinfoil hat, but something doesn't feel right about this. Uh, I honestly feel like this may be, uh, we may be getting set up for something. This, this is, uh, this, the gut feel doesn't feel right. Something stinks to high heaven. And like I said, if uh, you, if you turn these people into military people they don't really have a lot of loyalty to the u.s other than they just want a new life and they want to be making money and eating right you know paid well and taken care of uh so they don't have that uh, patriotism for the most part don't get me wrong there's people that come into the country follow the process that love this country um that's what our country was founded on right but um but this right here is probably not um a bunch of patriots coming in to fight for our country okay uh, I guess that's the bottom line, what I'm saying. So, all right. So let's break away from that for just a second. I do want to show you real fast. This is going to be uh, Department of Homeland Security Secretary. Uh, currently left D.C. is in St. Louis. So it's just a data point. Pay attention to them. And then this is going to be uh, in 721. That's your DOJ GO team. Looks like they are in Topeka, Kansas uh, for this week, at least right now. They could be just doing a fuel stop and headed somewhere else. We'll keep our eye on that for the next show. And, uh, but this is uh, DOJ, FBI, whatever it may be. All right. Now, let me get back over here real fast. I'm just going to show you TFRs because I totally blanked on that one. Just to show you what's going on. This is space operations. This is security. This one right here is security. I don't know what's going on there between these two. Um, and then uh, space ops 
We've got another, uh, this is a fire hazard down here. Air show, air show, air show, air show. And let me see what this is in Charlotte. I think that's actually a hazards, that's a fire. And then we've got uh, the Senior Living Center Brown Zone that's always there, all right? Just wanna make sure I am thorough in our discussion today. But let me now pull up, get over here to Sky Glass. Um, because I want to just show you, uh, let me hit a clean burn, wipe that real fast because I'm trying to get this, uh, get this showing properly and then we'll do a refresh. Uh, but I just want to show you the, uh, the C-130s and all the heavy lifts and we get over here to Europe and, and that's kind of the main thing. All right. So, um, all right, that is the board and it looks like a really hot mess today. A lot of, a lot, I mean, you can see. Uh, trainers, 82 trainers up right now, uh, and so that will actually skew your numbers quite a bit. But let's go C-130s, C-17s, got quite a few up. Let me see if I can get our, our uh, there we go. That's what I was looking for. Come on. There you go. Okay, this kind of paints a picture. Now you can see the heavies, uh, and it makes a little more sense. I was showing you earlier uh, without the, the, uh, the trace lines, right? So... This is where they're going. You can see very heavy concentration uh, along the eastern seaboard down into the, uh, the southeast um, of the U.S. And then uh, we got some flights. Looks like a lot of stuff going on down here in Florida, too. But this kind of gives you the idea of that, right? Now, let me get over here to Europe because that's where I really want to show you. Let me find one of my triple R's. And uh, huh, where are you? Now, let's just go any of them. There we go. That'll give us the paint picture all right now these are the heavies and the activity over the last 12 hours you can see we had some stuff come inbound across the drink into the uk uh, but this is where i just wanted to point out where you continue to move assets into the region uh support stuff support functions and then notice we're starting to spread out over here into this general area and into the middle east uh so that is uh, a pretty good indicator that um, these guys are still kind of putting uh, some forward operating bases into play. I think we're going to see something spike. Uh, that peacekeeper thing didn't get dropped out there for no reason, believe me. Uh, very likely that uh, we will be part of that, probably leading the effort to that, that that'll establish a no fly zone. And then, of course, we are knee deep in the war. All right. So. Uh, again, I just want to point this out. That's what I was trying to show you earlier and uh, kind of dropped the ball there. So also I wanted to show you uh, just before we bail out on this, we're starting to do a lot of stuff up here. So we're spreading everything out over Europe. It looks like we are getting, like I said, everything uh, broad coverage uh, to say the least. All right. Okay, listen, that's going to do it for today. Sorry that the links didn't work there at the beginning. I, um, I actually was having a streaming issue when I first started. Had to reboot OBS, and as soon as I did that, all of the links that I had tied in uh, to show the aircraft uh, disappeared. And so just uh, one of those days. So, all right, listen, um, we will see you again on Wednesday. Don't forget those uh, members, you guys, in the chat. We don't do a chat on Monday, but we'll be back on uh, Wednesday and then again on Friday. Uh, you guys stay frosty out there. Keep your powder dry. We'll talk soon. God bless. Monkey out. Check out the latest gear and products at monkeyworksus.com.